Well, hello and welcome everybody. This is a level two member only training for Electus Society. So glad for those uh, people who are participating and joining live and all of you who are not live who are going to be watching this recording. So thank you so much for watching and tuning into this important training. So this training is really talking about increasing your power and influence, especially in regards to politics. What is the, uh, the whole idea of politics? It's about who's in power, right? And the whole reason why we want to actually learn how to increase our power and our influence is so that we can create some positive lasting change. And so these are things that I had to learn on my own, but if I could actually teach you all some of these principles, then maybe you'll be able to be more effective in causing positive change. Some of you may know these key concepts, others may not. Uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about government. Uh, you know, hopefully I won't bore you, it won't be like a, a U.S. history class, uh, but I will talk a little bit about, uh, you know, power and, and government, and, and these are important topics to talk about, especially if we're in elective society. A lot of people here are elected members, and who knows? Knows. Many of you will go on to lead corporations, lead nonprofits, maybe even run for politics someday. So it's important for you to really understand these concepts. So I started with the home screen of an image of just uh, a protest, right? And again, as I mentioned in the orientation and different trainings about elective society, protesting is just one method of influencing uh, some kind of action. It's, uh, it's, it's supposed to be one of many tools. But again, it's not the only tool. And, and sometimes there's other tools that are more effective than just actually protesting. But when people think of like, you know, uh, addressing problems or grievances to power, the most thing that we think of is like, let's protest. But I want to actually share with you a lot of uh, different other concepts uh, in this training to actually help you. So the there, we're going to be talking about a couple of different things. You're going to learn seven principles to increase your power and influence. Uh, I'm actually going to do a separate training. I think about in another two weeks from now, that's going to be about specifically lobbying and how to actually influence decision makers. These are more just general principles in order to be effective. I'm going to talk about the four ways to discover the truth, uh, because there's going to be a lot of misinformation out there. And I'm just going to be talking a little bit more about power and government. So the first of all, this is me in college. Look how young this uh, man is, you know, uh, going to serve as president of the steering government. I was made fun of by my mentors who they thought it was really cute and naive. They said, you know, when I came out and I was going to run for student president, we tried to actually mobilize all the different students to get really excited and motivated and they they made fun of me but I actually really still love this quote by Margaret Mead an anthropologist says never doubt the ability of a small group of thoughtful committed citizens to change the world indeed it's the only thing that ever has but uh, the reason why I, I share this slide and I share this is because I still fundamentally believe this uh, there are more principles as we're currently learning as science and studies coming out that, listen, in order for you to actually make a massive change, you don't have to convince the whole world. There's a certain percentage of people of once you actually uh, persuade and influence a large enough group of people, however the percentage that might, may be, you could end up influencing everybody, right? Uh, because it just kind of takes over in terms of the collective consciousness. And so again, elective society is really all about teaching you about how to increase your power, how to increase your influence. And so that's some of the things that I wanna talk about today. So the first principle that I wanna talk about is if you are to increase your power influence, there's something that you need to do. And it's called learn, everyone's agenda, <laughs> meaning every person that you meet, they want something, right? And there was nothing more, uh, you know, uh, a better example of this than when I was in student government. The moment that I became a president of the student government, do you know how many people wanted my time and attention? How many friends I had people talking to, hey, Tim, la, la, la. And so suddenly after I, I uh, did not seek re-election, 
all those people who were the most, most friendly, 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 friendly people, people disappeared. disappeared. <laughs> Maybe it was because there was nothing else that I could give to them at that time. But when I was in a position of power, everybody wanted to be my friend. So I actually thought that this is something that my mentors taught me. And this is something I ta we talked about in level one. Uh, with them stands for what's in it for me. Because again, if I'm to influence other people, I need to know what you care about and what you want. But this is an advanced second level training. And so here's where I want to kind of level up in terms of this training is I want you to understand that there may be people who say that this is what they really want. But in fact, it may be other things that they really want. You actually really have to figure out almost like a detective, what is their agenda? What do they want? You know, what are they trying to achieve? And so the image that I used was from Star Wars. And if you've ever seen the Star Wars series, these this is a scene from the prequels, right? So I hopefully if you've seen Star Wars. If not, I apologize for a couple little bit of the spoilers, but this was Palpatine, right? This was an individual. He was a senator and he came off as very warm, friendly, look at that smile, who, who would not like a guy like that? And then suddenly he started becoming a mentor, uh, unbeknownst to Anakin Skywalker, you know, this individual who was very, very powerful Jedi and befriended him, tried to give him advice and coaching and things like that and support and put little earworms, little ideas into his head and things like that, because in the end, what was his agenda? He came across as, oh, I'm a, I'm a senator. I want peace. We need to, we have a problem with these rebels. We need to do something about it, only to find out later that he was actually on the dark side and that he actually had ulterior motives and, and, and different intentions. And it was only until you kind of go through the prequels that you realize, oh my goodness, that's the individual there. And so it, it's something that I want to have you all be very aware of. Anytime you meet a person who, who wants to befriend you, learn what their agenda is. What is it that they really want? And again, I was a very uh, naive, agreeable person. I really liked all people. I love all people isn't everybody awesome no there can be dark forces that take over people and so you have to be aware of that and so i think it, in order for you to uh you know increase your power influence you actually have to know this principle very well and that leads us to uh you know this more of this concept of what's in it for me that has to deal with motivation so in level one of electus uh, society i think it was in secrets to get active and engaged members or attendees um, during, uh, you know, in person or at these different types of events, I talked about how to recruit people. And in order to recruit, you have to actually figure out what people want. And so what do people want? Well, there was the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, meaning that these are all the fundamental principles of what people want. So first on the base level, they have psychological needs, air, water, food, shelter, uh, great. Then they have safety needs. They need to feel secure, but then they really long for love love and belonging, a sense of intimacy and friendship, a sense of connection. And then people also want to distinguish themselves. They want to feel important. They want their self-esteem. They want status and they want recognition. And so these are the different motivation factors to actually help motivate people, which we were operating in the realm of student government, different, different types of leadership. That's why you have award ceremonies and all these different types of things. But then the ultimate thing that people want is to actually self-actualize, you know, to be the most that they can be. Now that's level one. So now let's talk about level two. In level two, we're going to get, take a little bit of a darker spin. We have to talk about motive. Now, that's the difference between what's uh, there's maybe a motivation, but motive is your reason for doing something, especially one that is hidden or not obvious. I just recently watched uh, the TV show Yellowstone. I, I actually loved it. I can't wait till the fifth season comes out. And there was a, a woman by the name of Summer, and she played this, you know, environmental activist, activist right? Right. And I, apologize and I apologize if I'm if... providing any spoilers, but um, one of the things that they uh, she had to actually face some charges and, and was found guilty and the judge destroyed her. And he says, 
I know what you're trying to do. You, your intention is that you want to create massive change, you know, to, to, you know, stop these destructive, um, you know, uh, or to protect mother earth, to do all these environmental things. But guess what? That's your intention. But what's your motive? Your motive, your motive is that you want to cause destruction. You're a criminal and you've just used your environmental activism as a shield to channel your anger and your rage to actually cause problems. And it was like, oh man, like it was a really, really intense scene. And, and uh, again, there's more to the story. I won't spoil all of it because there's some, some twists and turns after that, that, that um, uh, announcement, but uh, I'll let you enjoy the show. But again, it really goes to this idea is that there are motivations for people and they're hidden motivations. And I want you to be able to have discernment and discover what those are with people because you're going to meet good people. You know, I like to believe that everybody here in elective society is here for a reason. You know, they're, they're servants of light, people who go into the room and want to help and cause massive change. But you have to be aware that you're going to actually face people with a lot of darkness, right? People with their own agendas, their own motives. And it's important for you to actually listen into your higher self, trust your instincts. Don't disregard if there's something that feels off about this person, you know, ask yourself, what is it? You know, what, what's wrong? Like they're smiling at my face, but you know, they, they say they want something, but what do they really want? So that's what I want to teach you. So there are a lot of different types of motives, you know, um, uh, for, for people. One is they want, they to, want actually to actually feel connected, connected to something to like an affiliate. Stuff. Some motive is that they're, they may go after you because you discuss them, right? So what do you do with something that you discuss? You try to eliminate it, eradicate it. Some people just you know, want to be feel comfortable. Some people are hungry and they need to eat, nurture. All these different motives for fear is a very powerful motive. And we're going to talk about that. Lust, uh, sex, love, justice. You know, people really want justice. That's what, you know, they, they, they really care about. Status, right? That's a very, very important tool for people. They want to actually get closer to power so that they can feel a sense of of, again, accomplishment, status, prestige. Uh, people want to play and do things for fun. But if I were to summarize the three most powerful motives, and this happens in Congress and government, etc., it is money, sex, and power. <laughs> and I, again, you might say, Tim, man, this presentation is really going dark and cynical. But I'm like, this is the truth, right? This is how people are manipulated. And, you know, the question for you is, can you be manipulated through these powerful means? I hope that all of you who are watching this training could not be manipulated by money. Uh, you know, what if they say, okay, lie, and we'll give you all this money, uh, you know, do whatever you need to take. How about we can just have sex with all these different people? You know, how many times have we seen stories and, and watched movies and different things where they're like, okay, bring on the prostitutes, you know, you can have whatever you want, uh, you know, all these other things. And, and what if you actually have people who are, have so much money, right? Maybe it's money is not even a factor anymore. But what are they really after? They're after power. How much can I actually control situations, people? And it becomes like a drug for people that they lust for power. And it's about how can I accumulate and control more people, more influence? Because this is what they, they find is that that satisfies them. It's their motive for, for doing all these different things. And they're not operating from a constructive place they're operating from a destructive place and again there's a lot of different tv shows that that talk about this uh and uh, one of them was house of cards which was a very very powerful uh, tv series on netflix which i highly recommend uh, and again it's all about these ideas so the second principle that i want all of you to walk away with is learn the truth because people lie okay there was a tv show uh, with this doctor named house and he was meant to be almost like a sherlock holmes detective and you know where where people would come in and this is what really shocked me about the show and then i, I know people who are in the medical field uh, especially my wife as you all know who's a veterinary technician People will come in and say, this is what happened to my animal or whatever it is. But the technicians and doctors know that's not true. 
people will actually lie. And so there's a famous quote from the TV show. He's like, the basic truth of it is that everybody's lies. The only variable is what they really lie about. And, and he was saying that, you know, the weird thing about telling someone they're dying is that it tends to focus on their priorities. But here's what he says, find out what matters most to them, right? And I just like that idea because in the end, I want you all to realize that there are so many people out there who are lying directly to your face. There are people saying, oh, I can do this for you. I'm good at this, or I'm the best at this. And then it's like, you want to believe them because naturally as humans, we like to say, oh, this company wouldn't lie and tell me that this actually doesn't, this works when it actually doesn't work. It's like, no, they could actually lie. You know, if there's profit motive, if there's some other means, they can do all these different things. And what's even worse is people will actually lie to you, but they actually believe the lie. <laughs> you know, those are the most uh, difficult lies to actually catch because they, they're so passionate about this that they they delude themselves. I've actually had business partners, different individuals that lie. But if you ask them, they're not lying. They're telling the truth. They believe all this other stuff because they have created, they've created stories in their mind in, or, in order whatever they can do to justify what they're doing. So again, be very, very careful. And so whenever you're uh, meeting or if you end up be serving in a position of leadership, understand that people will come and lobby you and they could be lying oh, this is the truth, this is the truth, and it may not be actually accurate or true. So what are you to do? Well, uh, this is the warning. Beware of wolves in sheep's clothing because they're out there. And again, that's a famous quote, you know, uh, a biblical quote. And, you know, I think it's actually very sage advice. And so you have to be able to increase your power and influence, you have to actually know where are the wolves. And you can't actually do that until you actually see them and acknowledge them and know them. And so what are the four ways to actually discover the truth? Uh, how can you determine the wolves from the sheep? Well, I'm going to tell you what they are uh, the, the really quickly. Results, reputation, actions, and keep an open mind. So let me just go into more detail with each of those four truths. The first is results. Judge a tree by its fruits. OK, again, another very popular, famous biblical quote. And what that means is people will tell you, oh, I can do this. I can do that. Whatever it is. I don't care what you say. It's show me what you've actually done. OK, so if somebody's claiming to this, show it to me, give me proof. And the whole idea is if this tree is the biggest tree and it's most awesome tree, well, I can tell whether this is a high quality tree if I actually eat the fruit. And you taste a bit of the fruit and you find out that the core is rotten uh, or it's dried up. There's no, you know, whatever it is, it could all be an illusion, but you actually have to see that. So again, when uh, people who are liars, they, they can only lie so much until you actually have to do and become a detective and say, okay, you're saying that you did this. Let me check that out. Let's see the details with whether it's working for companies or let me see the results, uh, whatever it may be. The second one is uh, your actions. So people will always talk a good game. And this was one of my favorite quotes. What you do speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. <laughs> because guess what? Some people say all these different things. Imagine this in a relationship. I love you. I secure you're the best person in the world. You know, you know, I'd give my life for you. All these different things only to find out that they're cheating on you, right? With somebody else. It's like, what happened to all that talk? Okay, guess what? It's not your words that really actually matter. It's actually what you actually do. And, and that is what will actually be the truth. And so I actually love this little photo because, again, this woman, look, a very attractive. She's holding this peace sign and she could say, come up to you and say, I come in peace and this is what I really care about. But guess what? What matters are your actions. And then once you actually take a low, closer examination, they could be talking about peace up here, but then having a gun ready to kill you at the other moment. Again, this is what you have to be aware of. And uh, when it comes to different people, uh, you know, different organizations and things like that, judge them by their actions. And so, and again, I go back to my advice. How do you know this? 
see what they do, see what their patterns or behavior, you know, uh, do a tr trial run. Oh, okay, you say you can do this. All right, well, let me see it. Let me show it to me, you know, prove it to me. In the, in the business world, it might be, you know, okay, why don't you say that your, your, your services, your solutions can cause, have these great effects? Let's test it out before we actually do some big deal with you. And then you find out that they don't have the substance ready. They don't have the product or service. It was all smoke and mirrors. People tried to say that they have a parachute. And then when you try to snap it on, they're like, oh, well, we were going to build the parachute while you're jumping out of the plane. Uh, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't feel very safe. So again, these are these different types of principles that I want you to be able to learn to discover their truth. The next one is ask around. The other way to find a truth about a person or situation is to actually say, what are others saying about this person, this individual? And then you actually have to determine, are they credible sources? Because right now, as Dave Chappelle said in one of his uh, comedy specials, we're living in the age of spin. And there's so much out there. So even uh, trustworthy you know, news media, news reports that we thought that we could actually trust guess what, have been infiltrated, you know, a lot of business interests, a lot of advertisements and all these different things, you know, they say that journal journalism is dying, because guess what, we're moving into a new phase of media. And so all the money for uh, that used to go for papers and very intense investigative journalism, it has been reduced, and it's not as much as there. So again, be very, very careful. So the only way that you can actually do or discover the truth is start asking around. If you, you know, talk to different people, that's how you can actually determine whether somebody is trust trustworthy or not. And here's the last one is number four. And we talked about this in, in uh, level one, which is humility. Now, what, what does that mean? Humility is understanding that you may be wrong. Okay. And so in order to discover the truth, you have to listen to the opposition. If you're a Democrat, you have to listen to the Republicans. If you're a Republican, you have to listen to the Democrats. You have to hear what the other side is saying, right? Because just like in a, a court of law, only when you're having two different points of view and hearing what they're saying, then you can actually see, okay, is this person lying or is this tell the truth? And then you look based on the preponderance of evidence. Uh, there's no better example of the, the case of the Amber Heard trial with Johnny Depp. She made all these accusations against him saying he was this person, this person, this person, and, and, and the media just ate it up and, and accepted it. But then once you actually got to have two sides show their uh, show their respective, you know, uh, truths and talk about it, you started to see, wow, uh, the, the case uh, of Amber is kind of crumbling, you know, oh, that's not really accurate, you know, and then you're actually seeing the different psychologists and you're like, wow, it was only through seeing these both different perspectives that I had to take the time and detail to really know what the truth was. And again, that's the problem with right now with social media is that, you know, to watch that Amber Heard trial took a lot of time and energy. And so some people don't have that. So they're relying on different sources and things to just tell them the one minute answer, just tell me the answer, who's right, who's wrong, you know, but the truth is actually takes time and effort to actually investigate. So again, for all the elected society members, for my invitation to you is don't become an ideologue. Don't say, you know what, just because my parents voted this way and this political party, these are the people that have the truth or this party. I won't want you to fa face left or right. What I want you to do is focus on integrity. Who are the people who do what they say, say what they do? Who are the people who are actually constructive versus destructive, right? You know, and, 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 and you actually have to be able to, cut through all the noise. And again, I got this slide from Peak Prosperity. It's a it's a, a company and an individual by name of Chris Martinson, who I really look up to. He's the one who warned me and all the different subscribers that the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic was coming, that there was a, a virus coming out of China. This was in January and I knew about it. And he was warning people. 
And I'm actually going to do a level three training just on, you know, coronavirus and vaccines and about the truth and what you need to know about the industry of pharmaceuticals and as well as the relationship of how maybe scientific studies and different journals have been compromised. Again, and I can just do it through the lens of seeing what happened to Chris Martinson. He actually, his YouTube channel got shut down. His Wikipedia page got pulled down. You know, uh, it, it was just so crazy to see the level of power and influence silencing people who don't, uh, who, who you don't agree with, right? And this is not a left or right issue. It's a matter of an integrity issue. So again, I'm gonna do a level three training, much more on that. Uh, so stay, stay tuned. But again, this is what we have to do is we have to keep an open mind and hear all sides of, of the truth. And there's one more comment that I wanna say about this is there's a, a famous uh, governor. He was a movie star. He was actually in the original movie Predator and he was a wrestler, uh, Jesse Ventura. He's, he was known as an independent, right? Not right or, or left, you know, not Democratic or Republican, ran, uh, uh, ran for governor of Minnesota. It was such a long shot, but he actually won. And he has some amazing stories and he's very distrustful of the government based on all of his experiences. And he wrote a book called Conspiracy, American Conspiracies. And he really goes into how people in power will lie and manipulate and try to tell different stories. And so the reason I, I'm mentioning that is because there is some things in level three training that I wanna share with, with all of you of what Jesse Ventura said, which is some mind opening, shocking different things. But the reason why I bring it up is because right now, uh, if you're called a conspiracy theorist, guess what happens? You are silenced, right? You are discredited. In, if any person, if you hear these types of statements, understand that they're not keeping an open mind. They're actually trying to shut you down. You're a conspiracy theorist. You be quiet. And so now anything that you have said has now been invalidated. No, I actually want to hear what you say. And like I shared with you before, for all elected society members, if you try to silence those people that you disagree with, guess what happens? They go underground and they spread. They become like mold on the wall and they spread and spread. What you need to do is bring their arguments out and allow the light to shine on, see if it's truth. Hey, they're saying this, they're saying this. What are you saying? Okay, well, they made this argument. And so that's when you start to discover and, and, and filter down and sift through the truth. But if you just call somebody, oh, you're just a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist, You've shut off debate. You shut off your mind. You shut off your intellect. So again, I've had this. I've, I've tried to have conversations with people, you know, because I like to keep think that I'm open-minded. Listen, I could be wrong, but they're like, hey, you know what, Tim? That's been debunked. And end of story, end of discussion. And I'm like, wait, I can't even share with you. No, it's been debunked. <laughs> oh, that's false. It's been fact-checked, right? And I even put a little uh, sign right here. Now there's all these different websites, you know, PolitiFact, truther meter you know fact checker again who's funding these websites okay but guess what it just provides a little you know stamp of approval you basically go to this website you're supposed to say false or truth very black and white and guess what you're supposed to not have to research anymore so it's 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 a very easy thing for us to do but guess what happens I've had friends who've sent me something and I'm like, okay, this is false. And I'm like, wait a minute, let me take time to investigate this. And I start researching and I start going down the rabbit hole. And guess what? I'm an hour and a half into researching. I'm like, oh my goodness, they didn't talk about this, this, this. There's some uh, elements of truth in what they're saying, but no, it's already been discussed. It's already been debunked. So again, uh, another thing that's a very common, that's science. Are you against science? Well, guess what? <laughs> science is not just a philosophy that you agree with or, or disagree with. It's a formulation. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an evolving thing where scientists constantly disagree and agree with each other, where that's what makes science so good is because you test out, all right, is this true? We test it, we keep testing it, and then we find out some new information. And then what we thought was right, according to science, turns out to be wrong. So that's what science is. So anybody says it's science, end of story, they actually don't really understand what science is about because science is always kind of disagreeing. There's a great video that I wish I could actually share with you all. It was from... Um, uh, you know, the uh, that TV show with Neil deGrasse Tyson, Cosmos, and he there was uh, one episode about lead. 
And it was such, it was one of my favorite episodes. I almost wanted to clip it and somehow share it with the Lectus community because it was all about two different scientists talking about lead. And one scientist says, lead is fine. Lead is natural. It's in the atmosphere. It, you know, we're, we're good. The cars can burn it and everything. And then you had another scientist says, no, this lead is killing us. It's causing health problems. And guess what? Both of them are right. But but you can use science, you can manipulate science, you can, you can, through propaganda, if there's interest and money at stake, guess what? They will suppress the science that doesn't coincide with their viewpoint and, and, and it caused harm. And then it takes so many years for the truth to finally come out. And again, it's just very unfortunate. And then the last thing is, guess what? If you want to silence somebody, just tell them, whatever there's negative stereotype about them, uh, you just label them, put them in a box. You know, you, they're not even a person anymore. They're just some evil monster that belongs in a movie. You're a anti-blank, okay? You're is Islamophobe. You're an anti-Semite. And then suddenly you've labeled them. And now guess what? You can't even have a discussion with them. You can't even listen to them. Oh, you're just an anti-vaxxer. Now everything you said doesn't make any sense. Like, again, this is where I'm trying to help all of you. Don't fall into that trap, right? Be very careful, study, keep an open mind and keep learning and then listen to your higher selves, you know, and, and try to discover what that truth is. Okay, the next principle is principle number three. Uh, you know, uh, let's see. Um, uh, when it comes to principle number three, discover who is in power. What do I mean by that? You know, there's a, you know, a famous Spider-Man movie, Tobey Maguire, when I was younger, maybe you, some of you have seen it or not. And, and this line became a famous line from the movie, which is with great power comes great, great responsibility. And so usually if a system is operating uh, uh, functionally, right? The people who are the most competent rise to the top of an organization. We naturally build hierarchies within our company, with our family, whatever it is. It's because we want the most competent, knowledgeable people, whether it's a CEO of a company or whatever it is, to be at the top, right? So that they can help make those decisions. So if we want to cause change, it's important that we know, well, who are the real people that can actually have the power? And power is having influence over other different people. So we have to discover who that is because I've been in sales, right? Many times with my different companies that I've been part of, how many times have I tried to sell or promote some kind of product or service or whatever it is, only to find out that the person who loves it and is so excited goes to a senior manager or boss or key decision maker and is like, no, we don't need that. We don't want that. And so all that work is done. So that's why it's so important to know, you know, who are the real people making the decisions because that's where you want to focus your time, energy, and effort on. So let's talk about power, uh, the actual definition. The definition of power is the capacity to direct or influence the behavior, um, you know, uh, of others or a course of events. So I actually thought that this was very interesting. There's different definitions of power in terms of uh, you know, science and engineering. So one definition is power is work that's being done over time. And another definition is power is force over distance over time. And so again, how I actually want to take this definition for all of you is notice that power is uh, has that king component of action, some kind of thing. So all of you are very powerful people. Many times you don't think that you're one person. What can I do? It's like, no, guess what? One drop of water can cause serious damage. And if anybody who lives in the Northeast who've seen snow, have seen it, uh, you know, if you have a roof with snow on it and it starts to melt, I've had melting snow and water drip down on cement blocks and suddenly a little cave starts developing just from that water, you know, and they, and, and, and if you think about a little water droplet causing a cave inside a rock, that is exactly what all of you are. So don't think that you're not powerful. Each one of you, as long as you keep taking action over a period of time, you know, you will actually accomplish great things. So again, I just love this kind of definition to just make you realize you guys are much more powerful even than a water drop. So the next thing is the different types of power. 
Now, uh, there are three types. One is power by title or position. So for example, a cop, you know, uh, if you look at a cop, you already have given them authority or power over you because you've just accepted that they are the ones that have the laws of the land. And so you end up listening to them. They have that influence just because of their title and position alone. But as I've warned all of you, if any of you become in positions of power, whether it's a boss, a manager, or anything like that, be very careful on how easy it is to get people to do what you want because they will listen to you just because of the title and position. But you want them to follow you beyond just because of that title. You don't want to manipulate them. Do what I say because I'm your boss and that's what I said and that's what you have to do. Well, guess what? If you do that, you're trying to force an outcome and they may not agree with you. They may disagree with you. What if your plan, remember back to humility, what if your plan is a stupid one? <laughs> what if you think it makes sense, but they know something because they're on the ground and you're in your office and they can warn you about something, but you don't want to hear it. So that's why you have to really allow that conflict, you know, uh, allow buy-in, actually share people's ideas, have that, just like we were talking about uh, left and right, hearing from all angles. As a manager that I was successful because I wanted my team to disagree with me, right? Because it was always that discussion. I, I was a democratic type of leader. Now, I'll make, I can make executive decisions and say, we need to do this, especially if there's a, something urgent. I can't have democracy if, you know, if I'm a surgeon and I need uh, something right away. I can't say, well, maybe we should use the, this tool instead of this tool. It's like, no, 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 life's on the line. You know? So there's different types of moments where you need to make quick decisions without discussions, but those are very few and far between. So again, uh, just a warning for all of you uh, to be very successful and more powerful and more influential and more successful when it comes to those positions. The next one is powered by influence. How much relationships do you have with different people? There was a, a book called um, The Relational Leadership Model or The Social Change Model of Leadership by Susan Comaviz. And she was this, you know, uh, leadership uh, person, uh, you know, that, that was highly recommended for anybody in higher education. Read it. I read the whole book and it said, guess what? The most powerful leaders are the ones that have the most relationships with people. So if you're likable, if you have, if you have a connection with people, guess what? You have influence over them. Who are you more likely to listen to? You know, a complete stranger or people that you like and you care about. And so, uh, and especially if they have something constructive and they're trying to do something positive and you have that relationship with them, they can have tremendous influence. And so that's what my invitation for all of you is develop great relationships with as many people as possible. Uh, and, I, and I say even relationships with people you disagree with, right? Because guess what? Uh, you can disagree, but they're still human, right? You just have to be very wary of people who uh, pretend to be your friends, but guess what? Like we talked at the beginning of the presentation, they have ulterior motives. They are dark, sinister, uh, negative forces. And so again, you have a right to protect yourself from people uh, and, and, and win over those adversaries. So uh, the next thing is power by expertise or knowledge. So for example, some people have power and influence just because they're experts in that area. They have spent so much time and effort studying that, that you just trust them because they're the most knowledgeable people. Now, be very careful now, because nowadays, everybody's an expert. This person is an expert at this, this is an expert at that. Um, I would say that, you know, um, you know, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book, and it called the outliers. And he really popularized this idea in order to become an expert in something, you have to spend 10,000 hours in it. So again, uh, I, I really kind of like that analogy, how much time, energy, and effort. And so you'll notice in a lot of my trainings, I don't claim to be an expert in anything. I claim to be very knowledgeable, right? Uh, my area of focus has been leadership and influence. And so that's where I feel comfortable, uh, you know, inviting, sharing my perspective and knowledge. But guess what? I always try to have that humility that, listen, I, I defer to the people who've done the research, right? Because they have ta taken extra steps that I haven't done. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants that, that maybe not in this public format, but have written books and all this information. I'm more of a teacher. I'm trying to digest information, give it to you, uh, 
uh, for all you to access, but then it's up to you to actually follow up, go read those books that I'm recommending. Uh, you know, I just want to help fulfill my mission, which is to help create the next generation of leaders that you're all empowered to be the light, you know, whenever room you go to that you're going to be constructive. That's, that's what elective society is all about. So let's keep going. <laughs> so I promised you I was going to talk a little bit about government. <laughs> so if you know that one of my favorite TV shows is, uh, or not TV shows, my favorite Broadway play is Hamilton, <laughs> you know, that's on Disney plus that you can all see it. Um, you know, I, I highly recommend that you watch it. The one of the things about that play talked about the Federalist Papers, and I took an AP government class. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I just wanted to just take a moment to acknowledge how brilliant um, our constitution and government ha has been set up. And this is something that never that always stood out to me when I read the Federalist Papers, and it was by James Madison. And he basically says that, uh, you know, if men were angels, a government would be, wouldn't be necessary. And I really love that line because guess what? This is the, the, the whole purpose of this training is I'm trying to teach you, everybody, there are people out there. There are dark forces right now. That's why we actually have government, you know, to kind of keep those checks and balances. Otherwise, those forces would take over. And, and it's just recognizing that. So I, I really want to arm each and every one of you to be have much more discernment, much more discernment than I had. As I grew older, serving in different positions of leadership, I became a little bit more cynical. And that's OK, but still be positive, still try to be that light. But uh, I, I think that's very important for us to really recognize that there are people out there that want to do harm, want to do th uh, these th things. And so uh, it's your job to become educated and not l uh, be governed by those forces. OK. And again, <laughs> quick shout out to my AP government class. Why, why, has, uh, why is America so astonishing? Because instead of actually controlling power all in one person, one branch, they basically said, let's divide it up and uh, amongst all these three, and they're all going to have to work together. And so if any one of them gets out of whack, the other one will actually keep it in check. It's called the checks and balances. So again, uh, I really like that idea and it's been very powerful. And, and you know, uh, I think we all need some kind of form of accountability uh, to make sure that we do the right things. So uh, again, Susan, I'm just reading your comment right now. I can take one person to get, uh, it, it can take one person to get something done. That's why we have advocates, you know? Yes, absolutely. This is what we need to do. We need to advocate. We actually have to uh, do something to represent because there's a lot of people who maybe not have a voice and it's time for us to stand up for the people who uh, don't have voices. Um, I don't mean to get so political right now, but listen, you know, because I, I consider myself more in that independent, you know, I, when I was younger, I was much more liberal, you know, as I got older, I could start to say, oh, wait, the conservatives are not evil people, they actually have some very good points too, and it's like, wait, I'm not supposed to be a Democrat or Republican, we're all humans, we all have different ideas, and you'd be surprised how much of us actually agree on a lot of these things, and it's these little nuances, but guess what, these disagreements are used to kind of manipulate us. They're the enemy. No, they're the enemy. And they're trying to get us to do that. But there are a lot of issues uh, that, that need to be worked on where we do need advocates, advocates for animals. You know, like I'm not going to be against anybody who wants to eat meat, but I think we can all agree that, you know, cruelty to animals is not a good thing. And, and, and you know, factory farming and, and abuse of animals, like it's something inherently in us as humans that we don't want that. And so we can work together and do that. Oh, Susan, you're taking an advocacy class. Okay, I, I love it. You know, feel free, to, uh, you know, to chime in. And, and, and if there's any other points you want to make, or I'm actually going to show a video, I'd love to get your thoughts and maybe share it with the group on what what you're getting out of that class. So right now, I there's two video clips that I, I'd love to show you, but I'm, uh, I'm going to encourage you to maybe watch them on your own. There is one clip that I really want to share with you. Okay. And it's from the movie V for Vendetta. So if uh, has anyone ever seen V for Vendetta? 
I'd love to see if you guys were watching. Oh, okay. I see uh, Susan, you're raising your hand. That's awesome. You saw V for Vendetta. Everybody, Kanelska, uh, you know. Oh, Ariam, you saw it. Okay, great. So I think you're going to know there's two clips that I want to show, but definitely I'm going to show one of them now. And the reason why I thought that this was so important to show is we're talking about this whole training is all about power, right? And so how do people get into power? And this clip really shows how we all can succumb to a power through other different means like fear. So this is a great speech from, from Guy Fox or the character playing Guy Fox or wears a Guy Fox mask. And I want you to all watch it and we'll discuss it. Okay. So let me stop sharing, and then I'd love to open it up to the group. Who has some comments? What did you take away uh, from watching that video? And if it's okay, Susan, can I call upon you first? Because I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts, especially what you've been learning from your advocacy class, since that's really a good uh, topic um, based on what we're talking about. Well, in the advocacy class we're taking, um, there's seven core issues. Um, within eight sectors of the policy, policy, eight sector policy advocacy issues. There's mental health, there's um, mental health care, health care, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And then there's the seven core issues, which is um, human rights, ethical rights, and um yeah it's all right you know i, I just trust you yeah. from memory no no those are really good yeah because so there's all these different issues that are affecting our world and so these are you can actually choose these different issues and you can advocate right. but guess what there's probably an extreme with each issue right some people could be pro this and something could be some extreme exactly yeah and then the and then it it intersects as well mm. i mean with mental health with um like for for mental health care for the core issue of mental health you have um um mental health issues with it for equal rights civic rights and stuff like that for rights for health care you have um uh no, I can see, like, for example, poverty, poverty could be in, in with social justice yeah. issues, right? So yeah. even though you're living in a community, like, for example, for me, I think education is a very important issue. I think that we should have yeah. all, an equal access, an equal opportunity to a good education, but we have a system in, in place where people inherently if they're wealthier, want to send their kids to better schools. So guess what? You the wealthier yeah. areas pay more in taxes. So each those children have more dollar per student than some other area. And guess what? They are going to have smaller class sizes, better education than others. I think that's a problem, right? So that's oh and, yeah. Yeah. So uh I, I I see what you're saying. What did you think of that? clip of V for Vendetta. I know you've seen that movie before, but what were your thoughts based on seeing that clip? Because this is all around the topic of dictators and how they rise to power and and how uh, about this whole idea about influence. And so I actually want to protect all of you from the seductive powers of dictators because we could all can be succumb to them. You know, what are your thoughts? And we can, and we can become dictators ourselves. Yes. Yep. 100%. That is the truth. And the fact that you said that, Susan, I appreciate it so much because people love to actually demonize other people. Oh, if I was in power, uh, you know, I would do it better. You know, socialism works, even though that we've had these different countries, it's just, it hasn't been done correctly. If I was in power, I would do it the right way so that and people would no such thing. You know, no such thing. <laughs> but it, there's it, no it, such thing. And, and um, there, you know, uh, again, uh, if you've ever seen the kind of different lectures of, you know, our, uh, the famous uh, psychologist, 
Jordan Peterson, who he actually has, you know, different videos on uh, Nazi Germany and, and, and Hitler. And, and people love to just demonize, you know, Hitler and Nazis, like in our society, that is the most evil thing that you could be called, right? You know, somebody that, you know, could cause all that harm. But what he always invited the people to really look at yourself, that if you were a soldier in Nazi Germany and somebody gave you the order and your money was on the line, your family was on the line, what would you do? Would you do what's right or would you follow and allow this, you know, dictator to dictate? Because guess what? You know, everybody believes that they're the good guy, right? You know, Hitler rose to power, you know, saw with a socialist agenda. Hey, we need to help the people. And then suddenly he morphed into, guess what? You know what's the problem of all this economic, uh, you know, oppression? It's the Jews. The Jews are like cockroaches. They're infecting our community. And so you hear all this propaganda. You're like, oh my goodness, you know, we need these people. They're they're toxic. They're dangerous. They're 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 harming us. And this happens today. Well, that's and why I, we have that's why that's why the United States has the Bill of Rights. Absolutely. But you know, even though we have the Bill of Rights, it takes upon you as individuals to not allow those fears take over you. I, I you know, again, uh, I'm going to talk about this in, in a future training, it, but like, like gun control. Yeah. Gun uh, control uh, is a big issue. Well, I'll, I was even going to tackle the issue of vaccines. I've had people say, you're disgusting. You're ignorant. You're caught. You're going to cause the death of these people. You're not even allowed to be around my family. So now I'm the enemy, you know, for having a strong immune system, not being susceptible, doing all these things and, and making my own choices without my health. So again, I, I've had family members that 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 told me to my face, I'm I'm causing the death of people, right? Uh, unbeknownst to them, they got the the COVID shot and then also got COVID and, and could have been spreading it. Exactly. You know it. So again, be very careful to demonize other people, to to uh, to allow these forces, like you said, Susan, so perfectly that we. I are wasn't people. going to get the vaccine, but I need I needed the vaccine for school to go to school exactly it's force and control you know and guess what i know enough based on my own research that i'm going to dedicate a whole separate training about it because i think there's bigger issues about influence and 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 i want to actually empower elective society members to actually re recognize that our different institution has been infiltrated so you have to always be more discerning than you have in the past and then the silence and and all these other different things but again listen I'm humble. I don't have all the answers. If somebody needs to get that vaccination, I'm glad that it exists. You know, I maybe have some different thoughts or opinions, but I'm not going to try to control people. This is what this presentation is about. We inherently have I, my, this desire. My, my, to control my, da people. my my dad told me the same thing that your family's telling you that if I didn't have the vaccine, I wasn't allowed to go visit him because. Yeah, and, and these are forces that sweep over people, and guess what? You end up making poor decisions. Do you know that there's been research that has been done in terms of propaganda of saying, hey, we it's not about just telling people, hey, take this thing because it's healthy for you. They'll say, guess what? We'll get more compliance if we make it seem as anybody who doesn't get it is the enemy. And so you started to see a lot of language in the media and the news. And, and this is a way, and guess what? It's money, right? These are vaccines. These are shots. Again, I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole of vaccines and everything like that. But to me, it's this example. But you know what, uh, Susan, because we brought it up, I feel like I have to show this second clip. All right. So I'm going to show this to every Everybody. This is in V for Vendetta. And it's and it just, I wasn't going to show it, but I think we have to. So give me one second right now. All right. So uh, if you haven't seen the movie, I hope that you do watch it. But uh, again, you know, I, I, there's more in the training that I want to discuss about that. The whole key aspects of why I'm showing you these video clips is because it's power, it's influence, it's money. And this training is all about increasing your power and influence. How can you increase your power and influence is don't allow fear 
to actually get a hold of you because guess what? You make bad and poor decisions, okay? So take a deep breath. Don't always actually trust everything that's coming at you, especially from the media. I've almost gotten, uh, you know, I've been fasting from the media and I felt more happier, uh, positive than I ever have in my life because I know that it's an addiction to be focusing on all the negative and not focusing on all the positive that's happening. So uh, uh, again, be wary of fear. You have that force that can take over from you. And there's a famous quote that I want to kind of leave you with. And then let's go on to the rest of the presentation. And the quote is this, um, you know, it's something like uh, uh, men or individuals are smart or, or a, a person is smart, but people are stupid. <laughs> and I love that quote just because what it's trying to say is you as an individual can actually make you know, some wise decisions, especially if you're listening to your higher self, right, that you um, listening to that gut, that instinct that inside of you. But the moment you're around other people, and suddenly, you know, there's forces at bay, you're worried about looking good, then guess what you get, you get that mob mentality, and then you end up making very, very poor decisions. And, and so again, that's what we're trying to be very wary of. So let's keep going with the rest of the presentation. So uh, a rise of a dictator, okay? So there, the term dictator can be used a lot with a lot of different other terms. It, it could be used with authoritarian, totalitarianism. Again, I actually put the definitions for the, of each of these things, but notice how they're very similar, like a dictatorship, one person, a small group of people uh, possess control, absolute power. Authoritarian, strong central power, right? Over the status quo, over rule of law. Totalitarianism, the most extreme version, right? Of this kind of idea of you want to control both the public and private life. So this is what we have to be very careful of. And especially that this is why I created Electus Society is that we all want, I want, to impart upon all of you that we all have free will, right? And it's, you know, and that we're individualization, different pieces of that light, call it the universe, call it God, whatever it is. And so that means it's about loving other people, not hating other people. And it's not about controlling other people. It's allowing people to be on their own journey, discovering their own mistakes, right? Uh, but if you're from fear, you, 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 you want to control people. And, and again, that's not the place that I would want all of you to be in. And so here's something that I thought that was also very important. Do you know that there are dictators both on the left and the right? And this was kind of actually surprising to me. It's like, you know, a dictatorship, again, is a form of government that controls power. But on the left, it's commonly associated with people like Stalin and Mao. These are people who come into power saying, guess what? We need to have a revolution. The people, they're the, these oppressive, uh, you know, um, uh, capitalists, they're trying to subjugate us. They're trying to, you know, uh, uh, take advantage of the poor and the working class. So they're the enemy. And so we need to fight them. And guess what? It leads to death. And it can lead to saying, hey, you're part of the problem. You're part of this class of people and you need to be destroyed. And again, it can be, it's a very, very slippery slope right and then on the right side of right uh, you know the right wing kind of dictators they may be more pro capitalist maybe more uh, status keeping the status quo and, but it, this is more focused on nationalism oh you know this is our people we need to actually have the state and the power and and, and all this other kind of different things and so and again, the thing that I find so interesting is that, like I shared with you before, Hitler was actually part of the Socialist Party. Uh, he was actually coming into power and saying that he was for the people. And then suddenly, guess what happens? He became a right wing dictator, right? Uh, wanting to control with uh, with the Nazi Party and everything like that. It's just it's shocking how these things happen. And if you don't believe me, I know you all do. Just look at these examples. Here are some more contemporary dictators. I wanted to choose one example on the left, on the right, right? Uh, so one of the things is, uh, you know, Chavez, who, who's passed away. Both of these people have passed away, but uh, that's why I just, uh, I could bring them up because it's not that controversial. But again, he came into power. He's like, I'm going to help the poor. I'm going to help the middle class, right? But as he got into power, guess what he started to reduce down? 
democracy, right? He wanted to suppress the press, control the press so that they can control the narrative, like, you know, change the different laws, right? He wanted the government to take over businesses and different functions and so that it could be for the people. But guess what ends up happening, right? Those people in government may not be the most qualified to actually operate and run that government. And so guess what you're going to have happen? Inefficiency, different challenges, issues. And this is the whole idea of different uh, uh, democracy seems to do very well with capitalism. And it kind of provides some checks and balances because, you know, uh, you can then have a, a functional society. But on the, and again, I'm not here to have a debate with you. I'm not an expert in this, these uh, concepts. I just want to share with you that this can happen, right? It can happen to us. It can happen to our country. So we have to be very careful of it. And, and on the right side, you know, Pinochet, he tried to say, you know what, I'm going to be pro-business. And, but guess what? He became an authoritarian and, and, and a right-wing dictator and, uh, you know, silenced people that disagreed with him and put them in prisons and killed them. And this was all okay and acceptable for us. And so you'd be surprised, you know, America has a very, very dark history where, you know what, we have supported you know, different types of dictators if it was in our own strategic interest. And again, I don't want to label America as this negative thing. I'm very grateful to be in America, but guess what? America is just people and, and, and there are people in power and you can have people in power doing good things and people in power doing bad things, right? You're either doing something constructive or destructive. And I just want to let you know, just like uh, as an individual, if I'm America, I'm capable of doing dark things, you know, like, like Susan and I, like you and I were discussing. So our job as leaders, you know, you know, servants of the light, let, let's just say, you know, ambassadors of peace is to be able to say, no, we're not going to let those destructive forces. We're going to influence for constructive purposes. We're not going to demonize and make enemies out of the people. We can have adversaries. We can disagree, but it's not about, you know, control condemn and killing all these different people right so let's keep going uh, I, i'll just see a couple of comments yeah uh, susan i got it you feel like we're in dictation dictatorship right now with our presidents understood one right we dictator with trump and another current president on the left now here's the whole point right no matter what your political stance may be, you know, there could be a very different political stance of anybody here in elective society. I'm not here to be pro-right, pro-left, Democrat, Republican, whatever about. But I'm glad that you're bringing it up, Susan, because we have to recognize, call a spade a spade, okay? If, you know, there could be moments where you hear speeches from Trump or from Biden or whatever, it's like, whoa, that's some dictator type of language. Who's the enemy? You know, wait, what happened to the uniter? No, these are the people. They're the, the disgusting. They're the ones that are the problem. We needed to do this. They're, you know, again, it's always to demonize, fear the other so that we can actually mobilize people. And again, it's I'm 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 inviting all of you to see above that, see through the, the tools of manipulation that individuals can use in order to gain power to have influence over each other. So, uh, you know, thanks for sharing that, Susan. So, again, the big theme, I love Star Wars, right? Stay clear of the dark side of leadership. Fear, your emotions, high stress, your hunger, your own ego, being attached, being proud, you know, proud, loving power. These are all seductive things that when you get in power, you will uh, have a tendency to want that, right? There's so many stories throughout history, um, you know, where, where people are tested. And can you be the type of leader that when that, that challenge moment comes, when you have a choice to actually say, I can gain more power, I can gain control, do you want to actually absolute and do that and enjoy it and help control people because it will give you a sense of power or do you want to disseminate it, right? Uh, I've had examples in my own experience where I did horrible things, right? Uh, I think I shared with you, it's worth repeating. Uh, you know, I was tired uh, uh, from campaigning uh, this one time and we were trying, I, I, I was no longer going to serve as president, but they were looking up to me as a leader. And one of my team members wanted to throw away all the newspapers. And I said, yeah, go ahead. You know, they wrote a terrible article about you. I don't give a crap about them. And like, they just asked me, I wanted to look good, you know, because, uh, you know, to uh, be the leader of the group, they were looking up to me. They threw out all the papers. And then the next day, 
uh, they came up to my office, the newspaper, they're trying to call up what happened to all our papers. And I was like, doing all my mentors, if I tell them that I'm responsible, what do I do? You know, do I take responsibility? And it was a horrible mess. What did I do? I lied. I'm like, I don't know anything about your papers, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and ever since that moment, all this animosity between student government and, uh, you know, and, and the newspaper went forward from that point. It, was, it took a year for us to build that relationship, all because I didn't want to, the power had got to my head. I wanted to keep the people happy of my own team uh, to let them do whatever they want. You know, with great power comes great responsibility. I didn't want to lose that power. I didn't want my legacy to be tarnished. And so guess what? I did those things. So my question to you is whenever you're in those moments, you know, how are you going to choose? Who are you going to be? And I think I've shared this with you, but it's worth repeating. What I decided at that moment, now looking back, I would have taken responsibility. I would have gone down to that office with a witness like the Dean of Students. I would have apologized for what I've done. I would have gone to the newspaper. I would say, listen, I'm so sorry. I wanna make this right. I made a poor decision. You know, and they may have written an article about me negative, but I would say I'm here to help. I want to I want to restore it. I want to say I'm sorry. The power of forgiveness. You know, how many times do people in our lives make mistakes, screw up, harm us so bad that if they were actually sincere and apologize, how we could so easily move on, you know? And again, that takes wisdom, that takes knowledge. And so I know that now I don't have any regrets. But that was my example of my weakness as a leader when I was addicted to power. So again, I hope that you can actually learn from that story, you know, and uh, and benefit from it. Iriam, I'm reading your comment. When fear is introduced, no matter how trivial, it can lead to chaos. One hundred percent. I love that quote. You know, uh, great, great, great point. So uh, let's talk about principle four, right? How to how, how to how increase your power and influence. Align yourself with the agendas of other people. Always look for the win-win, right? If you saw my webinar where I talked about why student governments fail and how to fix that, I don't know if you've all seen it. It's it's on YouTube. You just look under Electus Society, YouTube, how, how to fix student government. You might find it there. Um, I basically said, that's how you actually win. Instead of having everybody working together towards some win-win possibility, that's how you get more accomplished. If you, if, and I use the analogy of dog sledding, look at all those dogs going the straight road. Woo! They can go super fast. But if everybody else is going in different directions with their different agendas, you're not going to get anywhere. So that's why it's always about collaborative and working together. Um, here's a, another favorite principle develop relationships from the top to the bottom. So remember how I started this presentation with like learning who the key decision makers are, right? Who are the people with the most power and influence? Well, that's important, but it's all about all the relationship. It's not just about the relationships with people in power, because guess what? Even people who are not in power at the top they can still have influence. And I, and this was, the story was actually shared with me by, by a mentor of mine uh, who worked at, at Queens College. His name was Ted Hayes. And when I, when I became president, he told me this story and I, I, and I knew I would never forget it. So I'm sharing it with all of you. He said that, did you know it during World War um, II, I believe it was, where there was the, or maybe it was World, I can't remember. But anyway, there was a, uh, you know, I'm American educated. I'm terrible with my history. <laughs> what, what can I say? You know, uh, uh, let's just say that it was World War II. Yes, that's what it was. World War II, we had submarines, right? That was a technology. And in the submarines, you know, uh, there were uh, the soldiers and everything like that. And the, the story goes that the captain of the, of the submarine says, hey, uh, to his, his second in command, I'm going to go to the back of the submarine and I'm going to spend some time talking with the people who are responsible for all the garbage. And so he leaves and he comes back uh, and, and the second in command says, oh my goodness, the captain has been gone for almost an hour. We have a whole submarine to run. Why is he spending so much time talking with the garbage men back in the back of the submarine? And so finally, when the captain comes back and the second in command says, captain, like, what are you doing? Why are you spending so much time talking with those individuals back there? You know, we have a ship to run. 
And the captain's response was beautiful. And he says, those garbage men are the most important people on this ship. And the second in command's like, wait, what? How, uh, how could you say that? He says, if those garbage men, their job is to actually take all of our garbage, chop it all up, and so it's very, very, very fine particles, and then discharge it out of the back of the submarine. If they don't do their job, and if they don't grind up that garbage to a fine you know, powder, whatever it is, and it's in a bunch of big chunks, guess what? The moment they discharge it, the sharks in the water are going to see and want to eat that garbage, whatever meat, whatever's in that. And so they will start to form a line and they will start to follow the submarine. The Japanese or the enemy who had those submarines would say they will follow through their sonar the sharks and they could actually determine where our ship is and they can blow up our submarine. And so when he told me that story, I was like, oh my gosh, mind blown. You see, and this is where people with big egos, people who are obsessed with power, they're like, I don't want to talk to an executive assistant. I don't want to talk to the secretary. I want to talk to the person in charge. And it's like, no, you have to understand your job is to maintain relationships with everybody, even those executive assistants, even those those secretaries, because guess what? They could be the gatekeepers, right? They could end up uh, you being a nice person, talking with them, developing the relationship that at one point that that boss that manager that senior person would say well what do you think of that person i, I really like them right or they will make sure that your message gets to the top of their pile of all the different priorities that go on that plate so again be very very careful build all those relationships you know come in with humility and and, and accept and love all people it will actually make a profound difference in terms of influencing others so this is just a flashback reminder from level one of Electus Society, our trainings. Remember where I talked about secrets to getting active and engaged members? The secret is to actually build relationships. How do you build relationships and become BFFs with people? Well, three tips. Be vulnerable, right? Be able to laugh at yourself. Uh, share stories of, uh, about yourself, your life. Be authentic. Don't fake it. You know, you can be friends with people who completely disagree with you on different pers pers um, issues or, or, or politics or whatever it is. But as long as you're authentic, as long as you care about them and you accept them as who they are, there's no reason why they can't be your friend. And then if you want to develop a friend with another person, you ask them open-ended questions, not uh, you know, like, what are your goals? Why is that important to you? As opposed to saying, you know, yes or no questions or, uh, you know, find, ask them for stories, you know, have them share. And by them sharing, you'll start to discover how many different similarities you have. Uh, and that's the whole point, right? The more and more people talk to other people, I think we would discover how, how similar we all are. So uh, I'm going to end with a couple of these last two principles. Principle number six for power and influence, those who know the rules control uh, and have the power, right? So that's the why it's so important that you learn the rules what, of any organization, whether it's student government, whether it's the Constitution. What is the most powerful person that a, a, a police person, police officer is afraid of? They're afraid of lawyers, right? Because they know the law. They know that they can actually, you know, overturn what 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 they've done and things like that. So, uh, you know, know the rules and, and you actually can have more power. And so, again, these are all our rules for the U.S. Constitution was set up, you know, in all these different uh, establishments. And then the last principle is create an army. I always love this analogy, you know, to break one pasta is very easy, but if you had to open a whole package of spaghetti that hasn't been, un that's been uh, not been cooked, it's so much harder to break them, right? That is the principle of power and influence is there is power in having more and more people, not only from just like perspective of to cause massive change, but also on a spiritual level too, right? It's the collective conscious. The more and more people there, you vibrate differently. It's almost like you know, uh, you know, a, a different wave. If people are 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 holding different ropes and they can actually flop them back and forth, but if they're holding the same rope and they flip it back and forth, you can get a much higher amplitude or whatever it is. If those are who are people who are know about math and etc., you know what I'm talking about. So again, from movies to different movements, you know that the power in numbers. And so any type of issue that you're going to have, 
try to get others, people, influence through relationship, etc. And then once you have a large group of committed people, going back to the beginning of the presentation, you can actually make a positive difference. So these are just some of the main general principles to increase your power influence. So I appreciate everybody doing this training. This is the post-assessment. I'm going to actually uh, do a Q&A right now uh, or any other kind of comments. And while I stop sharing, I'm going to copy and paste that uh, you know post-assessment and I'm going to put it in the chat so people can do that. But who here would like to share what they've got out of this training? Any questions that they have? I would really love to hear uh, from a couple of people. Okay, who'd like to go first? I'm sorry, I missed I missed a good portion of it because I I've been in I've been in the other meeting from last night for the last hour for the first hour. So. <laughs> it's okay, Susan. You're in. Forgive it. I'm glad that you watched that and 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 don't don't worry. I'm going to send this recording out to all the level two members. You know, even people. There's a lot of people who are part of level two that have already completed and watched these trainings, but I've actually updated them with new content and new material. So it might be refreshing uh, for some people who have already seen some of this stuff to be reminded. But I'm going to send that video out. So you're going to not be able, you're going to be able to watch whatever you missed. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Ariam, I got your uh, chat. Thanks, Tim. A lot of great tips to keep in mind and the emotional pitfalls to avoid. Exactly. That's what I want you all to do. Increase your power influence. Beware of your own emotions. Avoid the pitfalls. Avoid the fear. Don't allow dictators to, to um, you know, take over. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm part of different groups and, uh, you know, and especially different uh, political groups are now reaching out to me just because of the whole vaccine thing and stuff like that. And I, I, I it's so interesting how when people come together, I, I you know, I have, have been persecuted. I have been rejected by family and friends and things like that. And so I now uh, have joined different different groups. And guess what? they're now demonizing those other groups. And I'm like, no, you can't do that. You're just doing what they're doing and they're not the enemy. Yes, you, we may have agree on these certain issues, but again, this is my warning to all of you. Don't put all your trust in politicians. You know, uh, I've seen politicians come and go, uh, whether you're Democrat or Republican, people swing. They vote a bunch of different uh, Democrats in because they care about some issues. And then suddenly, even though they like that politician in that community, uh, they feel different about some political movement, then it's completely shifted. You know, the people who voted Trump in power voted uh, for Biden, right? You know, uh, without getting into the whole elections and everything, but a majority of people voted for him uh, or the vote, majority of people who voted for Obama voted for Trump. How is that possible? It's because people can change. People, you know, the tides can shift. So don't put all your power into some kind of leader to be a savior. Believe in yourself. You be the water drop you cause the change, be humble, uh, listen to as much information as possible, and uh, and that you can actually make a difference. So I think that's a, a very good place to end it. Wouldn't you all say? All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I appreciate uh, all of you. Have a great night, and I'll send out this recording shortly. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching this training session. All these educational training sessions are for free for you to benefit. If you, one, really enjoyed it, and two, want more of it, my request is that you please click on the link in the description below and make a $5 donation to Electus Society. It's the equivalent of buying us a coffee or tea. If you become a monthly supporter, watch the video on the description below to learn how you can receive over $2,000 in value in terms of free books, executive coaching, and additional resources. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next training.